Hey, what's up, you guys? It's your boy Rashawn here coming at you again with another screen recorder video. All right, let's see if I can actually turn the brightness up a little bit. Yeah. All right. All right, that's my phone's at 100%. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Make sure I got my sound on my mic. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yep, sounds on my mic. Everything's good. Good. Okay, so, all right. Great. Welcome in, you guys, uh, the people that's stopping by to uh, watch this video. I believe this is uh, part five of a, uh, I would say, if I had to venture, I, I think there's probably going to be 70 parts to this because we, we are doing a book review and these books are, uh, and the books I review is uh, no less than like two to 300 pages. And, uh, and plus all the stuff that I'll be talking about is, uh, you know, adding my own personal life experience in the mix with the, uh, with the context of, of the book. Um, yeah, it, it, it can be anywhere from 70 to 80, you know, different episodes. Uh, now I try to, uh, do them back to back to back to back to back to back to back. But then again, I might end up getting bored or burnt out with the series. Uh, however, that doesn't mean, uh, I quit the series. I'm just taking a break from it. Kind of like the credit repair series. I did like. I think like 10 episodes straight, like one episode a night, you know, and then I just got, you know, of uh, anywhere between 30, 40 minutes long and then trying to upload it. And I just kind of just burnt out, but I will be going back to that credit repair uh, video. So just hang in there, y'all. My credit repair videos, I'm going to be going back in there. It's, it's so much to discuss when it comes to asset protection uh, personal, you know, just you, you protection, uh, you know, protecting yourself and, 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 and the things you own and, 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 and learning and growing as a person. It's so much things that, that need protection and, and we go through life, uh, literally just literally by hope and a prayer, hoping that everything works out and hoping that everything, uh, uh, good happens to us while none of the bad stuff happens to us. And to be honest, that's just not practical and it's just not realistic. Um, good and bad things are going to happen. The thing is, uh, you as an individual want to be more resilient in turbulent times, meaning uh, when things get shaky or times get hard, as they always do inevitably, you know, will you be ready for it? You know, are you going to be the person that has a med kit handy? Or are you going to be a person looking for medical supplies when you get injured? Because, you know, as long as you live on this earth, you know, there's always going to be a time where you're going to be in good health. And then there's going to be a time where you're in bad health. The thing is, is do you have a med kit or do you have a medical assistance ready for when, it's, for when you're in bad health? If not, you're going to suffer, you know, that much more. So with that being said, again, we're going into part five of how to arrest proof yourself. Uh, so basically, uh, the main thing you need to know is if you're being poor in America or hell, even if you're middle class in America and you don't want to get poor, you know, this video right here shows you what to do when the cops get in your face. And we literally just did a, a drop in the bucket, uh, a total drop in the bucket. These five, like, episodes that, that I did, total drop in the bucket. Literally, you guys don't know anything yet, which is 
why is 70 to 80 parts of it, you know, uh, uh, theoretically, you know, I don't know how many parts it's going to be, but we're going to, uh, we're, we're just going to knock it out. And I know this thing's a monster. I just know it's a monster. It's a, uh, my brain is just overloaded with information. And, and and I still don't know shit. So, excuse me, guys, if I'm just yapping, just yapping, just yapping, and I'm not diving into the episode just yet. I just need a minute before I dive in. Because I literally have long days, very long days of doing things, but... Uh, the stuff I do in a day is 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 more than what most people do in a week. And I, and hopefully one day I have something to show for it. And and that's honest to God, not bragging. Like I'm not trying to stunt, I'm not nothing. I literally do a lot of my days. Okay. Let's get into it. Last time we, we left off at Bye Bye American Dream. So let's pick up from there. Let's take it from the top. We're going to uh, have the AI take over. And uh, I'm going to let the AI uh, basically talk to us. And once we have the AI talk to us, you know, if I feel the need to uh, say something, then, you know, I'll, I will. Let's get it going. Bye Bye American Dream. One of the terms my co-author and I created is the electronic plantation. This is the lifetime restriction on jobs and opportunities that derives from the instant accessibility of arrest information. Increasing use of background checks and widespread access to the National Crime Information Center, NCIC, the federal government's database of every arrest made in the United States and its territories, means that the record of your arrest follows you around for life. Even if your arrest record is expunged or sealed or adjudication is withheld or the charges were dismissed or you were acquitted at trial, the arrest record is permanent. Worse, it's easily accessible. Because All right, so this part is actually important. So when people pull up a background check or a criminal background check on you, it's not what you were guilty for or guilty of. It's that's going to show up. It's going to show uh, everything's going to show up. Everything that you were arrested for is going to show up. And that's what makes the arrest record uh, that much more uh, deadly, especially in this world uh, that we live in. Um, people, they just want to know what you got arrested for. You know, so if you had, if you got arrested for criminal possession of cocaine or or or, or a battery or, or assault or whatever it is, or rape or, you know, whatever... It is you got arrested for that's permanent on your record. You cannot get that expunged. You cannot get that removed. You cannot do, you know, none of these things, you know, as of the recording, you know, of this video, you understand what I'm saying? So that's, it's not about if you were guilty or if you sent it or you were sentenced or if you uh, served any crime It's simply what you were arrested for. So if you went to trial and, uh, like a lot of these uh, celebrities, like uh, I know you guys probably heard about the Johnny Depp uh, uh, trial. And uh, I know everybody heard about things that happened to Bill Cosby and, and a lot of these celebrities. And regardless of whether or not you think these people did it or not, it's the whole act of being arrested and having to go to trial and defend yourself in the court system uh, in the first goddamn place is you're going to lose. You know, the fact that you have to take time out of your life and, and go back and forth to defend, especially if you know you're innocent, you already lost. You lost time that you'll never get back. Not only that, you know, there's always going to be a, a group of people that believes uh, that believes the, uh, the accuser, you know, despite, you know, what the evidence says. So you're going to uh, lose a portion of your uh, fan base or if you're not a famous person, you're going to lose. You know, people are going to judge you based off your arrest record. You know what I'm saying? So if you got arrested for rape or something like that, and then you went to court, it turns out that everything was consensual. And, you know, she probably had sex with you and then regretted it later. You know, that's not rape. That's just, you know, your thing. That's your conscience. Maybe you should have thought more before you slept with the guy. 
you know, whatever, right? Had a better judge, a character. You know, that's not, that's, you know, regret doesn't mean you you get to take back your consent. You know, regret, you know, if you order something from the store uh, at, at a restaurant and, you know, the order is correct, you know, say I order, um, let's see, uh, a pineapple pizza and they give me a pineapple pizza. And that's what I ordered. And I bite it and I say, oh, my God, this is disgusting. I don't think I like pineapples on pizza. And I go up to the people and say, hey, I'd like to change my order. And they say, why? What's wrong with it? Well, I don't like pineapples on pizza. And then they look at the screen and they say, well, sir, that's what you ordered. You know, we can't refund that because you don't like something. You know, you have to say the order's inaccurate or it's overcooked or, 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 or something's wrong with the order. But you got the exact thing you asked for, you know, and you can't get angry at that. You just have to order, not order it the next time. So in that specific scenario where, uh, say, for example, like I said before, with a lot of these celebrities that, that was going on where they have sex with these women and these women uh, uh, regretted it later and they're accusing these guys of, of, of rape. You know, you cannot do that. You know, regret is not rape. It's not, it's like, you, you probably might not do it again, but, you know, that's not rape. You still consented. So, however, your boss and your employer is not going to see that that way. You know, you know, they're going to see that you got arrested on rape allegations. We don't want to be known for hiring or supporting, a, you know, rapists or anything like that. Or, you know, God forbid, we don't want anything like that to happen on the job. You know, you know, you have people that are in business and people in the world in general, a lot of people are just fearful and 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 they don't like to take risk. That, that's uh, another thing. A lot of people like safety. They don't like taking taking risks because uh, at the end of the day, you know, there's more people, you know, in the world today than ever before, you know, and they all want jobs and they all want the same thing that you want as a human being and a person more or less. Right. So if you're here with an arrest record and John or Billy or Steve is over here and they don't have an arrest record, tell you what, I'm going to take the guys that don't have the record, you know what I'm saying, over you, you know, simply because they don't have that stipulation to their name. And that's how the employer is going to look at it. And that's how they often do, you know. And so that's why, you know, a lot of the felons or, or, or people that have, you know, arrest records, you know, they, they struggle with employment and, and they get these uh, bullshit ass jobs, these low wage jobs and, and these jobs that don't trust them, you know, around uh, people or, uh, or, or or around money because of what they got arrested for. And even if they are guilty of it, you know, pe you know, people can learn, people can, you know, move on from things, you know. You know, you get arrested for something and you serve 20 years, you know, 15, 20 years for something and you get out. You think you're going to do that same thing again? Now, I really doubt you'd be willing to go for another 20 years. You know, that that's probably not something that's up your alley. I don't think you ever do that again. You know, but however, these people treat you uh, like second class citizens. Well, not second. Well, not second class, more like. More like third class citizens, you got a felony, third class. Um, and basically, uh, all you could do is uh, work for basically immigrant immigrant uh, wages for the rest of your life. You'll never be able to see this uh, American dream that uh, you see other people in America achieve because you can't have an American dream at minimum wage. You know, and the minimum wage in Georgia is like seven twenty five. And I know it's different in everywhere else, but, you know, it don't matter. You know, the minimum wage, you can't live or do anything on minimum wage. That's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Minimum wage is a lie. I mean, technically, if you're a badass, you can survive on minimum wage, you know. But <laughs> you can't really live on minimum wage, man. You know, let's, let's just keep it up. Let's just keep it honest. Let's keep it honest. Let's keep it a buck. You know, it's too much stuff that you need to be living off minimum wage. Hell, in order to be, man, it's so much America that you'll never be able to enjoy off minimum wage. Hell, it's so much uh, America that you won't be able to enjoy 
off shit, 15 an hour. You know, it ain't really, you know, and none of, especially when they tax the money on top of that. You know, if it wasn't no tax, you know, it, it'll be better. But since they tax it, you know, at about 50% by the time it's all said and done, you know, they tax it, uh, your money before, uh, before you get it through income tax. Then uh, they tax it through sales tax, and then they tax it when it's uh, income tax return, uh, and, and then they keep taxing it. They tax it every time you pay with a card. They tax it every time you. Uh, they just tax it every time it changes hands. It's a tax. <laughs> Excuse me. No, they tax it when you save it. They tax it when you die. They, they they erode it with inflation if you try to hide it and don't spend it. You know, inflation's eating the value of it. Yeah, it's just a lot of things that they're doing, you know, with this currency. You know what I'm saying? Basically, the only thing you could do with it is is best thing you could do as soon as it hits your hands, you spend it. You know, and I know that sounds like horrible advice, but to be honest, you know, you might short. I wouldn't hold any cash any longer than a year. Because the inflation is just going to drop the drop the value of it for about about twenty percent of its value. So, you know, inflation is about around twenty percent. You know, I don't and and I, and I say that to be on the safe side. It might be a little bit less than that. It might be fifteen percent. Hell, it might even be ten percent. But the general idea is, you know, your your money today is worth less than what it was yesterday. So every day you wake up, just know your money's worth a little bit less. And then after about a year has passed, you know, you've been lost a, a good amount of your buying power. And this happens year over year over year. Inflation has not stopped. It's going to continue to to grow and, and be a part of our uh, things. Um, inflation hasn't really stopped since. And this is a whole nother uh, video whatsoever, but uh, inflation hasn't really stopped since uh, the Bretton Woods Agreement back in like the 1900s, where they were one got one one dollar used to equal equal uh, one gold coin or one gold bullion or whatever, right? And then they took that off. But I, I don't, I don't want to go into that right now. That's a whole nother um, thing. It's a whole nother video. Right now, I need to stay on the topic of arrest proofing. Arrest proofing, excuse me. I'm tired, y'all. I'm tired. I'm doing this uh, recording. I'm tired as hell. So basically, these people look at your history and they judge you based off your past. Simple as that. And they don't care what your story is. They don't care. Half the time, you don't even get to defend yourself. You put your shit in online, and there's a computer that go ahead and either qualifies you or disqualifies you based off of. You know, the, the parameters that's already preset by the employers, especially if it's a, a high demand job, they don't even see your application like 80 percent of the time. And and that's another video on how to get your application seen. And, and on jobs and oh, my God, so many videos I got to do There's so much content that I have not gone to. I'm just behind. I'm just behind on everything. I, I should be at like a thousand videos right now, but I'm only on like 48, 49. 50. It's all good, though. Let's keep going. Because employers tend to regard an arrest as tantamount to a conviction, a single arrest can deny you job opportunities forever. The word plantation was chosen because it's a fighting word for black Americans. I want the danger of this new plantation to get attention and be understood. The masses of young black and Hispanic men in jails are too much to bear. The electronic plantation restricts them to a lifetime of low-wage work once they're free. Okay, so basically, this is the uh, the this is the book. Basically, just uh, verifying what I just told you guys. So I'm gonna keep going and uh, just you know just hear it out. Oh, and uh, this book was written by white people, by the way. I don't want you guys to think that this is some uh, Ungawa Black Power book written by you know black folks. No, this is white folks actually admitting, you know, actually ex cops. You know, uh, they wrote this book, so they see what's going on day to day, and they're basically just spitting facts. And again, this book is uh, written in 2008. So there are some things that uh, that have been uh, put out of uh, out of date on this book, because uh, some things in this book actually have changed for better or for worse. And uh, we'll update those things, you know, as I find out about them. But for right now, uh, 
I want to say a good 70% to 80% of the things that's said in this book is absolutely accurate and is still true today. The electronic plantation restricts them to a lifetime of low-wage work once they're free. Their only hope is to avoid the system long enough to grow up, get educated, and get on with their lives. To do so they must not be penalized forever for arrests that took place during their youth. The electronic plantation has destroyed one of the greatest features of American life, the opportunity to get a second chance. In the so that's a, uh, let me just break that down right there. So uh, one of the greatest features of American life, uh, there's actually a, a, a list of them. But the thing is, from 1776, all the way to 2024, what's happened is, and, and that ain't even really that long ago. Holy cow. I'm really thinking about it like 17, the year 1776 to 2024. Like, dude, that, that's, that's less than 300 years ago. Literally, that's like four grandparents ago. Four grandparents before the, the, the you know they declared independence. That's not long. So when you hear about the founding fathers and all this stuff, that's four grandparents. That's not I mean, it, it's long for like, you know, human lifespan, but I'm saying like as far as like, you know, history of the world, history of the nation and all that stuff. That is like that's crazy. Four literally that's four lifetimes ago. Four to uh, five lifetimes ago, you know, and and then you'll get the um, you get to see you know the colonists and and all that stuff, right? And 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 that, and, that, and but that's not the point that I'm trying to get to. Uh, th these people from those time periods they experienced uh, certain perks and being Americans that we don't experience today. Uh, one of the things that uh. I'd like to say is buying power, which I discussed. Inflation is killing your buying power. You know, uh, there's a lot of things you used to be able to get with a dollar. You know, hell, when I was a kid, that you can't get with a dollar. You know what I'm saying? You used to get, you used to be able to get four bags of uh, potato chips from the corner store for a dollar. Literally, you go in there and uh, you put a dollar, you go up to the counter, put a dollar in there, and you could get you uh, four bags of Doritos for one dollar, literally 25 cents. You get you uh, four honey buns or four whatever, you know, and these are Little Debbie's and these are Fritos, like name brand chips and, you know, junk food, uh, sodas and juices, you know, a quarter for a juice. Yeah, you can get you can get you something like that literally for a dollar. But and then, you know, uh, during my teenage years, you know, you can only get two bags of chips for a dollar. And now if you go today, you know, a dollar only gets you one bag of chips and you don't get any honey buns for a dollar. There's no honey buns that they're selling for a dollar. It's like a dollar fifty uh or, or two twenty five for, you know, a honey bun of the same size as back then. And that's only within the span of uh fifteen to twenty years. You know, of just my lifetime and me growing up. So when you hear stuff from your grandparents talking about, you know, they spent five cents on uh on a ball of Coca Cola, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, 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 the buying power of the dollar was very strong back then, so they can afford a great many things with a hell of a lot less work. You know, they didn't have to work as hard as y'all did today, although they did work hard back then, you know, so because a lot more things were more manual, but the, the money that they got paid for working hard went way further. So if I had to measure it, the average person today has to hustle three times as hard as the people back in the day because a lot more things have been invented since that time. Uh, inflation uh, from that, as we've already discussed, uh, has been doing this job, you know, from that time. And then you have a lot more competition. You have a lot more mouths uh, in America, especially with the, uh, the open border things, the uh, crisis that uh, Biden's been doing. You know, extra 15 million people done came onto the, company, uh, the country and put you know, extreme pressure on uh, the infrastructure, you know what I'm saying? And plus, on top of the already American births that we got, you know what I'm saying, it, you know, on the infrastructure, we, you know, everything's taxed to the max right now. You know, like, 
yeah, the, you, you can't afford a house now. You know, as, as someone who works, you can barely afford a, a, a car as it is. Hell, even if you like a beater, if you wanted to get a beat up car, like a literally a hoopty, you know what they call it. You know, saying so you still got you got to pay two grand for a hoopty and a hoopty used to never cost two grand. Hoopty would be like two, three hundred dollars, you know, maybe like five hundred dollars. You know, saying so within about I want to say before COVID, five hundred dollars get your hoop hoopty. But after COVID and the border crisis and all this stuff, a hoopty is running you two, three grand. And, and, and that's for a car with a lot of the features not working on it. You know, no AC, uh, you know, windows, wipers ain't working. You know, it's a lot of things that ain't working, you know what I'm saying, with that car, you know. But, yeah. A lot of things, um that we used to be able to afford growing up, we can no longer afford. You know, uh, the times has been uh, exceptionally hard uh, within the last uh, seven to eight years. We keep getting hit with crises after crises, uh, problem after problem, you know, uh, bullshit after bullshit to where, you know, uh, and every time we turn around, you know, we have less and less freedom, you know, today than what we did yesterday. So, yeah, the, the opportunity to get a second chance mean, simply means you were able to go from, if you have problems in one neighborhood, right? Say, for example, you got arrested for some dumb shit or you had a bad reputation, you know, in one neighborhood. You could literally up and go to a whole nother part of the United States or a whole nother town. And you can have a new lease on life. You can be the new guy in town. And if you learn from your mistakes, you know what I'm saying? You could do everything a lot better this time around. You know what I'm saying? And, and maybe you can make that choice that you wanted to make with, with that family. Or maybe you could work that. Maybe you won't do this on this job. Or maybe you won't uh, make that life decision. You don't say you get a second chance at life, a second chance to do right. Uh, However, like this uh, book is about to tell you, the, the AI is what I'm going to tell you, is that, you know, they found a way to tag your ass and they found a way to keep uh, tabs on everyone. So there is no second chances anymore. You know, everyone gets one shot. That's literally what it is. You get one chance. And, and, and you know, and they got this uh, crazy ass saying here that the world does not owe you understanding. And, 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 you know, I say bullshit, man. I, I, you know, I don't think that's fair to bring people into this world and, and, and they don't know what the hell the rules are and they don't know how the hell shit works. And, and you expect people to do the right thing and do the best thing. You know, a lot of people are just doing the best that they can. You know, and, and now that it's harder today than it was before, you know, a lot of the old heads, you know, they, they turn around. And in all honesty, you get them by themselves and they discuss with you how they feel with you. In all honesty, they don't want to be uh, young again today because they don't want to live to, 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 to see the horrors and the bullshit that we're going to have to deal with. They don't want to be here when shit hits the fan again. You know what I'm saying? Like they're glad that they got their woman that they got and their woman stuck through them. And when they didn't have anything and then, you know, they together, you know, and they 80, 90 years old and been together 40, 50 years in a marriage and all that stuff. And they got houses and stuff back in the day or whatever it is, or hell, even if they're single, you know, if you, you know, still you can, you can be a single parent and back in the day and, and work a job and, and, and get you a house. You know what I'm saying? Cause you can literally have two, three kids and still be able to afford a house back in the day. If you work full time, and you did your mortgage and everything like you're supposed to. You still afford the house. But now you can't do that. You know, you can work two jobs right now as a single parent and you still can't afford no house. Hell, you work three. You know, hell, if you're single and you work two jobs, you still can't afford a house. You know, so we're moving towards a uh, it's not really funny, but you we're, we're moving towards a, a permanent renter's class. Meaning that if you don't have it, you chances are you're not going to fucking have it ever in your life. If we keep going the way we are. Um, yeah, if you don't have it, you're not going to have it ever. You're never going to get a taste of uh, what your grandparents had. 
the, the way we got it right now is uh, the way uh, women don't trust anybody. Uh, the men don't trust anybody. Uh, they're pitting the men against the woman, and they're putting the woman against the men. And 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 the women are bought into feminism, which isn't good for men. And now you you got to do everything by yourself. You used, you used to have a strong woman by your side that at least make you a sandwich where you get ready to go to work. Now you ain't got shit. You know, all you got is porn and, and fucking uh, masturbation tools. You know what I'm saying? As a man and a woman, you know. And and women just go out and get a whole bunch of sex, but they don't get no commitment from the men that they want. Or, you know, that they try to sit up there and, and they try to double dutch it. They try to date one guy for his resources and then, then go bang the guy that they really want to be with. You know what I'm saying? And then what happens is they get found out and then they end up losing it all. You know, I've seen a lot of this stuff happening. And the thing is, is they're they're jacking this country up. You know, this world is, this country is falling apart compared to, you know, how it used to be. You know, and I don't know if you guys actually uh, spoke to some older people. Like, go go, actually go listen to some older people that's been around and they'll tell you what life was like when they was growing up. And, and then they'll tell you what life was like when their parents told them, you know what I'm saying? And then you'll see just how different it was, you know, uh, than today. It's like you got to deal with, all, you know, they say back then, you know, the times was was simple, you know, simpler times. Now everything's so complicated and there's so much bullshit going on. So, yeah. So you, in all honesty, have to supersede or or surpass your ancestors you and your children have to surpass you and that's just to be average you know that's not to be exceptional that's not to be a king or queen or anything like that that's literally to survive in the next generation because tomorrow brings more problems than yesterday so you have to figure out how to survive until tomorrow and to and, you know to deal with tomorrow's problems or else you cease to exist you know, so we, we have a, a lot of problems going on in the United States today. There's a dating crisis. So, you know, how the way they said in the beginning of this book, how women are the main people getting their men out of jail. You know, hell, like if it ain't your mom or your grandma, you know, getting you out of jail, you know, you ain't really got no girl because, fe again, feminism, you know, saying she'll, you, you should, she'll fucking be with you while you're doing what you're doing, and when you get arrested, you know, and she'll just up and go because, you know, she's not a ride, or, a ride or die chick like back in the day. You know what I'm saying? She's just around for the good time and then want to let the good times roll, and when the good times don't roll no more, she's gone. So you don't even got a woman no more. So, you know, I, it's, just, it's just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least back in the day, you could be poor, smell like piss and shit, only got two, three dollars to your name, and at least you got at least you got you know a woman. You ain't got no one, got none. It's crazy. But yep. Just keep going. In the age of paper records, once you paid your debt to society, you were done. You could hang out your thumb, jump the train, or hop the pound and go west, east, north, or south to escape your past. You. So uh, the hound is uh, short for greyhound, okay? You could start over and forget old legal troubles. The records were thousands of miles away. Records of offenses by juveniles and offenses where adjudication was withheld or where charges were dismissed were truly inaccessible. Not so today. An arrest should not be a life sentence, but it is. The slippery slope. Reasonable suspicion probable cause jail. Arrest. That's the bullshit right there. Yeah, reasonable suspicion. And then that, that dumb shit, basically, I don't even want to rage. I already been yapping. Let, let's keep going. Arrest proofing is all about not attracting police scrutiny and about allaying suspicions when you are confronted by police. Throughout this book, my co-author and I try to avoid hair-splitting legalisms and stick to standard English. Here, however, are some useful definitions of terms you hear all the time but may never have had explained. Jail versus prison. Jail is used in this book with its common understanding as a pretrial detention facility. It's where you go after being arrested. Prison is where you serve your sentence after trial or a plea. Both facilities have cells with bars, but they are quite distinct in the criminal justice system. 
reasonable. It's a big difference between a holding cell and getting being processed in. And more on that later. Reasonable suspicion. This means that police suspect that you are about to commit a crime. Reasonable suspicion is the standard that allows police to stop you on the street or pull over your car. Prob see now, reasonable suspicion. See, see, that's the bullshit. They may not have a crime. See, police are supposed to only interfere with you when you're suspected of being involved in a crime. However, you know, they've changed it now to where it's probable cause. I mean, this guy might be involved in a crime, so I can go and fuck with him. Because he might be doing something. Maybe. Possibly. He could not be doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Or he could be doing a whole lot of stuff. But the thing is, they give the cops the authority, and they meaning, you know, the criminal the criminal justice system, give these police the authority to fuck with people based off a hunch. Yeah, based off a hunch. What's good? Probable cause. This means that it is more likely than not that a crime has already been committed. Police require probable cause to make an arrest. Mis and again, likelihood. They're not sure, but probably. It, it looks like it. You know, probable cause. You know, it's not a guarantee. Like, I didn't see you do it, but you were in the area, or I smell something over here. Or, you know, it's just reasonable. If they, if they think you did it, all probable cause is... is it allows them to investigate. Literally, literally. Okay, hold on. It looked like something's happening here. Let me go and, 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 and investigate and, and, and see what's, you know. And, and then, you know, they start questioning you and asking you all this stuff, pulling you over, looking around in your car, trying to see what you got, you know, in between the seats and over here. And, and they're, they're, they're checking, you know, they're checking your tag, asking for your ID. You know, so even if they didn't see all that, you know, they're trying to run your plate, see if you got expired tags, see if you got something expired, see if you're missing, uh, you know, see, is this even your car or, you know, like they're just trying to see something, basically see if they can I arrest this guy. Just keep that in your mind. That's the question police want to know uh, whenever they see people on the street. Is this guy doing something that, you know, probably that, that I can arrest them for or, or, or ticket them for? Because remember that that's the money that's the money that they that, that keep that justifies the existence of these uh facilities and these institutions they need to get their money somehow right and the only way the government the only way the government knows how to make money is by printing it or getting it from who you right and in, in a non uh, in a non product way like if you go to McDonald's that's an actual business that's not a government institution you know what I'm saying? By law, they have to give you something of, of value in exchange for your money. Uh, however, you know, government institutions don't have to do that. All they have to do is literally they, they put a they put a price on freedom. That's literally what they do. They put a price on freedom. Freedom isn't free, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, but I hate to I hate to be. Uh, it seems like I've been getting ahead of this book here, even though I haven't really read a lot of it. Uh, I don't know. I've just been, let's keep going. Misdemeanor, also known as Mr. Meaner in the trailer park in the hood. This refers to an offense for which the penalty is generally one year in prison or less. Felony, this refers to crimes punishable by one year or more in prison. Felonies often carry lifetime penalties such as the loss of the rights to vote and to own a weapon. In my state, a felony conviction creates a lifetime ban on holding any job that requires a state license, such as health care, law, insurance, real estate, finance, television and radio broadcasting, and barbering and hairstyling. The path from reasonable suspicion to felony conviction is a slippery slope down which you slide to jail and a ruined life with amazing speed. This book is all about staying off that slope. About cops. This book tells you how to avoid cops and minimize their opportunities to arrest you and your children, but it's not a criticism of modern police. The problem today is not, repeat not, that police are untrained, incompetent, racist, or corrupt. 
It's precisely the opposite. Because police are better educated, better trained, and more tightly disciplined, you're more likely to get arrested than ever before. Police generally make lawful arrests and are accurate and... Yeah, and, and the training and all the stuff that these police officers get, that stuff doesn't come cheap, and they have to get their money back. The reason why you're more likely to get arrested today than ever before is, come on, guys, say it with me. You know, you know strangers to this. Money, 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 like Mr. Krabs. Money, 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 money. Money. Police generally make lawful arrests and are accurate and truthful in their reporting and court testimony. Fewer mistakes mean fewer chances for an attorney to set you free. The improvement in modern policing is profound. When I was a kid, the police in my city were an organized criminal conspiracy. They ran gambling, prostitution, booze, and loan sharking, and collected their vig, short for vigorish, the usurious interest charged by loan sharks like a bunch of redneck sopranos. Lawyers, politicians, and city hall fixers called the shots. Anything, even a murder rap, could be handled for value received. Inconvenient people were shot while fleeing arrest. In 1955, Florida Governor Leroy Collins suspended the sheriff and appointed my father, an FBI agent, to head the police department and clean up that rat's nest, and that's what he did. My father, Dale Carson, being sworn into office as Sheriff of Duval County, Florida, by Judge Shields, January 30, 1958. He cleaned out a briar patch of corruption and instituted standards of education and training that produced a modern police force. For the past 40 years, police departments all over America have been modernized, trained, and educated. Crooked cops have been arrested and rogue cops fired. The result is the superbly trained police of the new century. Cops today are generally honest and practically ubiquitous, and they'll arrest you for tossing a gum wrapper. Nonetheless, police routinely use tactics, such as insiders, that provoke suspects to run, resist, and fight. Using these tactics is called putting a suspect in a trick box. They allow cops to transform a traffic ticket or misdemeanor into a felony arrest guaranteeing incarceration for suspects and impoverishment for the families who pay the legal fees, bail bonds, court costs, and probation charges. Although general Hold on, I think I missed that part. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Modernized trade, crooked cops been arrested. Okay, so they got rid of the the, the crooked cops and the road cops. Uh superbly trained, okay, cops today, da 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 da. They are oh yeah, they arrest you for tossing the gum wrapper. Yeah, bullshit like that. Yeah. Um let's see, let's keep going. Hold on. Ah, here it is. Okay, okay. So so here it is right here. This is the special part right here. Nonetheless, pol police routinely use tactics such as inciters. Uh incite. Uh let, let's let's break that word down. Inciters, inciters. Uh the base of that word is incite, right? So uh incite. Does when when have you guys ever heard the word incite be used in a sentence? Just give y'all a second. Oh, you're inciting violence. You know, you're just trying to incite violence. You know, that's what they be saying on TV and that stuff when they're trying to make a person come out to be a bad person or whatever, right? Uh, you, you're inciting. You're inciting violence. You're inciting, inciting. Okay, so basically these people here uh, actually are bad people. They, they use tactics to make more money. You know, it's business. They have to justify their existence. You know, they don't, if cops don't have you on anything, what they're going to do is they're going to try to instigate, or that's another word for insiders. Uh, they're they're going to try to get you to act out. They want you to, they, they're going to try to annoy you. They're, they're, they're going to try to, I don't know, shine a light in your face. They're going to say some slick shit out their mouth. They're going to say, you know, that they're going to do something. They want you to buck up against them because they know if you get angry with them or if you try to uh, basically uh, ha have a have a uh, have a tough guy moment with them, you know, you basically threw a ball back in their court. That, that That's what you did. That, that That's what you did. So it's like someone's telling you, yeah, go ahead, hit me. Go ahead, hit me, and, and you're the millionaire, right? Let's say you have a million dollars, right? And then, you know, some nobody shows up, right? 
uh, some junkie uh, miss rotten teeth missing, you know, uh, he's down bad, right? And he comes up and he says, yeah, man, uh, yeah, hit me, man. Yeah, you, that's why you a bitch. Yeah, and, and, and I fucked your mom. And, da, 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 and he's talking crazy and he's saying all kinds of stuff and spreading rumors about you and he's harassing you, right? And the thing is, you know, the last thing you want to do, even though it's natural, you know, to you, especially if you're a man, is you just want to go ahead and just knock them on out, right? Just go ahead, put them on up out of his misery, get them on out of there, send them home, coach, right? But you can't really do that because of the simple fact that he's poor and you have a million dollars. So it would be impractical for you to hit this guy because. He has nothing to lose. You do. You have much more to lose than he does. So here's how it's going to go. You're going to knock that dude out, right? And what he's going to do is he's going to get back up and he's going to act like a straight bitch. Uh, a straight bitch. He's going to go and get him a lawyer. He's going to get one of them lawyers that say, uh, you don't have to pay anything unless we win you know, type lawyers. And, you know, and the thing about these lawyers, they're not going to take a case and uh, devote all these resources unless they feel like they got a case. And if you tell somebody a millionaire punched the shit out of somebody that's uh, not a millionaire, then, hey, we got a case. We could get at least, uh, we could get them for at least half his wealth. <laughs> you know, we could sue them. So they're going to sue you for damages. And now you lost half of your million dollars. And now you're the embarrassed one. He's up here living it up. Uh, from basically antagonizing you and harassing you. And that's pretty much, uh, and that's a simple way of uh, what I'm saying. So uh, take that and apply it to the uh, police uh, situation, right? So you had a situation, you know, cops pull you over. Like, again, like I said in the last episode, that last cop, he said, oh, you, you're not on my, uh, I'm not on your time, you're on my time. You know, he's talking to me crazy and shit. Yeah, he, you know, they always say that. Oh, you know, and I'm like, dude, you pulled me over, bro. You on my time, bro. You know, they gonna always, you know, they gonna always talk to you kind of crazy. They they know they know they on your time, man, because they done stopped you. You know, they already at work. You know, they they, they don't really care. You know, it is what it is, and they looking around all up in your shit at the traffic stop. Y'all y'all come on, man. Y'all know what it is. I don't have to keep going through this, right? Y'all understand what what I'm saying? They're they're looking for something. It's uh in those uh those clips I showed you in those old videos uh. Uh, that I did in my other uh, videos where they, you know, they're like, well, why are you in my face where those people have a camera, right? And they're putting it up to the cops. Like, to be honest, them cameras is really saving them, you know what I'm saying, from, from the police, uh, what's it called? Because th those cops actually get away with a lot of stuff if you ain't recording, man. Like, them body cams on them officers, you know, I think that was a great, 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 great um, uh, and, and, and invention and uh implementation you need to have the body cams on absolutely you know because these people they fuck with you and they do anything to you you know especially yeah you know there's no witnesses around there's no recordings so yeah and and, and let's be and let's be honest bro if they can get you uh, let's read the the rest of that hold on so insiders that can uh, provoke suspects to run, resist, and fight. So, yeah, they're going to basically try to get you to buck up against them and uh, try to get violent with them because, you know, they're brutes, right? But that's, how, that's not how you deal with police. You don't deal with brutes with brute force. That's not what you do. Uh, you're going to lose that fight every time. What you're going to do, what you should do is you should uh, most definitely – Use uh, basically litigation. The pen is mightier than the sword, and in this case, the pen is mightier than the police officer. You know, say you, you threaten to sue their police department, or you threaten to, uh, you know, if you get done in any wrong way, you make sure you have reliable lawyers, or if you don't have lawyers or anything like that, uh, let's say uh, you get very familiar with, you know, the laws in your area. You know what I'm saying? And you, but it's also good to, uh, you know, get some legal uh, guidance. Like, everybody should know what the laws is in this country. Like, everybody, you know, like how everybody try to get a, a law book for, a, I mean, everybody get a Bible in their house. Uh, everybody needs to have a law book for the United States, literally sitting on the dresser 
you know, in their house or on their wall that's uh, available to everyone in the household. You need uh, an up-to-date version of all the laws that these motherfuckers be writing in these books. Look, I mean, seriously, you really do. You know, like that, that should be a part of the religion, how to keep people from, you know, basically dealing with bullshit. Read a law book, 2024 edition, uh, you know, federal and state law. I think that'll actually be really good and that'll keep a lot of people out and people uh, actually know how to deal with these cops better when they don't have, when they know their rights. Right. Um, so let's continue on. Yeah, this is what they're saying. So yeah, they put the suspect in the trick box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Let's see what this says. Uh, allow cops to transform a traffic ticket or a misdemeanor into a felony arrest, guaranteeing incarceration for suspects and impoverishments for the families who pay the legal fees, bail bonds, or court costs. Exactly. So basically, there's more money in their pocket. So they put a price on your freedom, and instead of this goddamn two three hundred dollar ticket, what they could do is they can up the ante on your ass. Now you got a five thousand dollar bail bond. You know, what I'm saying when versus a three four hundred dollar ticket. You know, so they get more money out of you. You know what I'm saying? Way more money out of you. And you get to spend time in jail, and they get paid for having you in jail, and, and a whole bunch of stuff, man. It's just a whole bunch of more money, and they get a fat check, and and it also goes a long way for uh, helping them uh, qualify for promotions and going from sergeant to whatever the next rank is and a whole bunch of stuff like that, man. Yeah, it really does. It's basically... Ain't nothing but bad for you and good for them. The the, the worse you act around these people. So, uh, and right here it says, although generally legal, these uh, tactics are highly unethical. So, unethical versus legal, you know. Come on, man. You know what they're going to do. Although generally legal, these tactics are highly unethical. I have to know. I have seen them for years. This book gives detailed instructions on how to avoid getting suckered by cop tricks. It analyzes the famous heads cops win tails you lose questions that cops ask before vehicle searches. The chapter, Dirty Cop Tricks, explains many of these tricks, ranging from legal insiders to grossly illegal tactics such as planting drugs and, throw down, guns on innocent suspects. In Emergency Procedures, you will even receive instruction on what to do in the worst of all circumstances, when you are being beaten or shot by police. If you survive, I'll tell you what to do in the hospital before the bandages come off. Ah, oh, man, so that's a juicy chapter right there. I didn't even know. Okay, so they actually have a chapter called Dirty Cop Tricks where he's going to give you guys some tricks uh, that that these uh, that a lot of these cops do. So that's going to be a huge value uh, where we work our way to around to that. And what? Oh, yeah, the famous heads cops win and tells you lose questions that cops ask before vehicle searches. Yeah, so like when the, in those things where uh, police ask you questions, don't uh, what's it called? Don't don't answer any questions. The, the, I think that's the response that they're giving them YouTube videos or whatever when they when the cops pull them over and antagonize them. They say, "Oh no, nah, I don't ask for questions. I don't ask for questions." And you think they're saying that to be an asshole, but that's actually part of one of the uh, the dirty cop tricks. The uh, the heads cops win and tails you lose uh, questions. Um, but I, I don't want to spoil that for you guys, but that, that's why they uh, people say that. That's why people say I don't answer questions when they're involved with the cops because they don't want police to basically. The whole idea is they don't give a fuck about you. They're just trying to arrest you, dude, so they can get more money and get on to the next person. OK, it justifies their existence. It gets their juices flowing, knowing that they can shit on somebody's whole day. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm not saying all police are like this. Or all police are, you know, this isn't some like anti-police thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, but for full disclosure, I fucking hate traffic cops. I think anyone that does traffic duty, you know, you are a piece of shit. But however, police officers that go after like real criminals, you know, like majority of the time, you know, my hat's off to you, even though I don't really wear hats, but much respect to you. I salute you. You know, say, however, you know, if you spend most of your time being a fucking traffic cop, bro, fuck you, dude. You're a fucking loser. And I don't respect you at all. You know, not that you care, but I don't give a... 
I mean, I, I don't want to <laughs> swear, swear too much. I can't stand traffic cops. Traffic cops are some of the worst people I ever met in my life because they're the ones that try to use these insiders because they're bored all day looking at cars go by. So when they finally do get something, you know, they want to, you know, they got something to prove. They're hyperactive. They've been waiting for action all damn day. So they're going to try to get you all, man. Man, I'm having flashbacks. Anywho, we're going to read this last little piece down here at the bottom. And then uh, I'm going to stop it from here because we're going up on an hour right now. But uh, let's keep going. If you survive, I'll tell you what to do in the hospital before the bandages come off. The how to and the why. The book has three parts. Part one deals with the why, the reasons you're more likely to get arrested today than formerly. It discusses the major players in the criminal justice system prior to arrest, cops, bad guys, and the clueless horde. Judges, prosecutors, attorneys, jailers, and probation officers appear later, after you're busted. Cops are the major players, and understanding them is essential to arrest proofing. Cops are not ordinary people. They are licensed, paid, and trained by the state to hunt the two-legged beast, i.e., you. They enjoy hunting people and making arrests. It's what they do. They're evaluated and rewarded by their superiors almost exclusively on the number of arrests they make. This is no disparagement. Controlling bad guys with hunter cops is essential for civilization. Just think of the next police officer you meet as a polite great white shark with a well-pressed uniform. And you, you're a struggling little fish. This Now, this is the part that where we're ending up uh where you have the whole cop part. You understand like he's using this analogy like the cop is the big badass, you know, white shark and you're basically the little the little struggling fish trying not to get ate by the shark but however that that isn't necessarily true you understand what i'm saying there there's things that eat sharks you know in the ocean as well but um i get what he's saying if you don't know your rights you're a struggling little fish however by the time you get done uh, reading this book and in combination with uh knowing the law and knowing your rights, uh, you won't be a struggling little fish. You'll probably be something that a shark wouldn't fuck with. Uh, I have to probably look up something, uh, you know, to do towards that analogy. But uh, I know that there are some things in the ocean that sharks dare not to uh, hunt or venture near because they know better. But, um, yeah, let's start with that. Let's keep going. This will help you adjust your behavior accordingly. To know them is to avoid them. And that, readers, is the beginning of arrest proofing. And the bad guys, they're the second group of players. Understanding them is simple. They're career criminals and they enjoy what they do. They don't mind hurting and even killing people who get in their way. They enjoy it. To them, the only thing worse than prison is working a straight job. The worst are the violent offenders. In this book you'll meet several I helped send to the electric chair or prison for life. Okay, readers, get ready for some secret stuff, never seen on TV and unmentioned in the daily fish wrap tossed to your front door. Are you seated? Do you have a grip? Here it is, the criminal justice system does not spend much time arresting and sentencing real bad guys. What? You say, that's impossible, no doubt you want to challenge me. Do not I, like you, watch the news and see that every single day some bank robber, carjacker, or child molester has been rounded up. Of course, but I see what you don't, that for every serious bad guy arrested, hundreds of petty offenders go to jail. What the criminal justice system actually does most of the time is process the third group of players, the clueless horde. Clueless petty offenders are by far the most important players in the system because, without their vast numbers and the money that is extracted from them and their families, cops and judges would be filing for unemployment and all those brand new police stations, jails, and administrative offices would have, for rent, signs hammered in their immaculate lawns. Who are these people, the bread and butter, nay, the staff of life, for millions of municipal and state employees? They are people who possess small quantities of drugs. Get an attitude with police. Yell at their wives and girlfriends. Drive with suspended licenses. Do malicious mischief. Create disturbances at clubs and parties. Ride bikes at night without a light, I'm not kidding. Get arrested as accessories during police raids. Carry medications without the proper labels or prescriptions. Loiter, i.e., hang out. 
Take pocket knives and nail scissors to school. Drink alcohol in public. The criminal justice system often acts like a mindless bureaucracy and prosecutes cases that are absurd. For example, as this book is being written, I'm representing a 12-year-old boy who was arrested and jailed for throwing a pecan at a bus. A pecan. I took the case in part because, 45 years ago, my co-author and I, then 10 years old, stood beneath a bridge and threw mud balls into a bus. We beat feet before the cops arrived. We were lucky. My client, however, is being charged with throwing a deadly missile, which is a third-degree felony. Years ago this was not a serious crime. It became so in the 1960s, when anti-Vietnam War demonstrations and race riots exploded around the country. Legislatures made throwing a deadly missile a felony so police could bring serious charges against the students and black Americans who were tossing rocks and bottles. But a pecan. A freaking pecan. Today this nut-throwing kid is being shoved through the legal sausage grinder. Even when I get him off, he will have an arrest record and will get extra scrutiny from police forever. Had my now, in this particular situation, this is where he basically... This is uh, where the kid is actually just a victim of old laws that the government didn't undo once the situation was solved. Now, I understand the point of having a law where you have people rioting and doing certain shit like that. Like what he said, how he gave you a history lesson about the 1960s uh when anti-Vietnam uh, War demonstrations and race riots exploded, you know, so there was a, you know, they did that, you know, for that particular time period, you know, but once that time frame passed, you know, shouldn't, you know, governments and legislators say, hey, wait a minute, you remember when we did that thing, that one day when we implemented this? Well, we don't really need it anymore. So let's undo that law because people aren't really doing uh, anti, you know, uh, what's it called? Anti Vietnamese, well, Vietnam, excuse me, anti uh, Vietnam War demonstrations uh, anymore in 2023. You know, although today, in, in order to play devil's advocate, they'd probably be playing uh, anti uh, Ukraine. Uh, Russia war, you know, now, you know, today, and they might start riding again, but then you, you create something else, then you re implement it again, you know, for that until, you know, this passes and blows over. But, and then you just implement it and re implement it as you, you know, as you, you know, need, you know, but you shouldn't be uh, keeping it like in continuum and then seriously charging a 12-year-old boy for throwing pecans at a bus, or hell, even if a grand or grown man want to throw a pecan at a bus, as silly as that is, you know, that shouldn't be a fucking felony for throwing a damn pecan at a bus. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. So they're, they're passing out felonies like it's candy, and this is um, one of many examples of this. And how much time I have here? Ooh, I'm on an hour and two minutes, boy. I've been going for a while. This is a, this is one of the longest videos that I've did, man. Should I keep going or should I just wait till tomorrow? It's eleven o'clock. Uh, I got some stuff to do. Yeah, like rest my eyes and watch some anime because I actually did a really good job selling my stuff today. Yeah, I sold some cologne and some perfume today. Shoot, I went and uh, I got I got to make some more plans for some other things today. I mean, yeah, just what I meant tomorrow. Yeah, I got I got some stuff to do. I gotta go. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I spent too much time on this video. Uh, okay, guys. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more. Oh wait, no, I was supposed to be finishing this up. It didn't get enough. That's right. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Let's finish this up, and then I get off. Yeah. Had my client known how to behave around police officers, he probably would have received a warning and a trip home to his mother in the back of the cruiser. Instead, he got hammered. Little boys throw things. They poke things, stick things, and kick things. It's what they do. To arrest and prosecute them for doing dopey kid stuff is outrageous.
Others clueless types commit offenses that are more serious but are still misdemeanors or low-level felonies. They are people who drive under the influence of drugs or alcohol, do not pay child support or fail to keep up licenses, tags, and insurance, show up for trial, pay restitution, or perform every jot and tittle of their terms of probation. Are rowdy, drunk, obnoxious, and get in fights. Buy sex from male and female prostitutes. Is this a how to be a crook book? Okay, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. All right, we're going to talk about this criminal uh, pyramid later on. But for right now, uh, we're going to stop it off right here. And we're going to come into uh, parts. We're going to do part six tomorrow, guys, okay? Because I am getting tired and I do need to kick back and relax. And I don't want to fall asleep and then I have to edit out the whole part where I done passed out. Snoring on the damn uh on the damn video. But thank you guys for coming in. And if you guys watch literally the whole hour, I appreciate that. You know a lot. I mean it's 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 good. I just like to know the direction that I need to go with these videos. Uh and to be honest, uh I think I've got I've gotten the most views whenever I was uh either speaking on some drama or I was doing these arrest proof videos. So I think, uh, although I don't want to go the drama route because I'm not a drama person. Um, I think I'll just do this arrest proofing because that's where I've gotten my uh, next two subscribers from arrest proofing myself, uh, you know, the arrest proofing series. And, uh, hopefully, uh, once this series is done, uh, I can continue doing more content that can improve the quality of life and give out information that people never heard before. Uh, yeah, and I can continue to do that. You know, I got so many books and so many things that I need to uh, go out and, and uh, talk about. Like, for example, we got the working poor. The working poor. You know how the poor in the middle class stay poor in America. And, and then we got uh, another book that's uh, based off of uh, why why the Ar why the Arabs uh, hate the Jews so much, you know. Even though that ain't got nothing to do with improving your life or anything like that, it is an interesting topic that I would like to go in as like a bonus round, you know, just for education. I mean, that shit ain't got nothing to do with uh, beating homelessness or, or 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 improving your 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 quality of your life. It's just, uh, I guess it would if you were an Arab or a Jew, you know, I guess it could and that, and, and that would justify me doing it. Um, but yeah, it, it's very interesting because I used to always wonder like, damn, why the hell do Arabs and Jews hate each other so much? Or why do Arabs hate Jews so much? And uh, that might actually uh, tell us why, you know? So that, that might be the thing that I... Uh, that might be something interesting right there. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, without further ado, thank you guys for coming. And now uh, this is a long ass video, but I appreciate you guys for coming. Till next time, I am out.